Hey everybody, it is Scott from uh, Dark Side Racing and the Ultimate Conquest Racing League. Uh, it's the league that I own, but I also race in the real world. And uh, this is the first day in the shop getting prepared for the 2023 season. And one of the things we had on the to-do list from last season to this season was make um, a left front spring change. And uh, we're gonna, one of the first things I can say we're gonna do is we're gonna take care of that today. And what I like to do um, is anytime I come across anything that I think might be of interest to help people understand setting up cars and, and things like that on the service, I like to make a little video and throw it up. Um, so you can see the engine's gone. Uh, that was pulled right the week, maybe the second week after the end of the last season and after the final race. That was pulled, that sent off to the, to the engine, our engine builder. Thierry's race engines just outside of Oshkosh, one of the best engine builders in the Midwest. Um, there's a lot of them, so I'm not saying he's the best. I'm just saying he's, he is one of the best, and he's an awesome dude. Um, but that's out of the car, so you can see kind of how um, empty it is without that. So, But we're talking about shocks. So we pulled the left front shock off, so that's gone. That's over on the workbench. But I wanted to show you the right front shock as best as I can. There's a bunch of junk in the way, and I'll go around to the back. So you can see, obviously, this is the brake cooling, brake cooling fan. Uh, the duct work going back into the um, the vent that directs all the air onto the rotors. Um, but you can see the shock and how it's mounted in the car. And these are actually pretty much the same thing as next gen, um, as the next gen cars. So this is pretty much the same orientation. Although it's not going to be mounted in the precisely the exact same place, but this is the same orientation as in like say like the next gen or something like that. Um, so this is just basically how it works. So you have the shock housing up on top. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the oil is. And this is where all of the different pistons and different um, holes and everything and all the different components that, that make this shock work and adjust how, how heavy the damping is um, or how light the damping is. All that happens up here inside the shock housing. And then down here, you can see the, the actual shaft of the shock. And um, with this little orange thing here, that's a travel indicator. Um, it's pretty useless, to be completely honest. And I'll show you, um, you might notice on the other side, the, the travel indicator that's a little more easily, um, it's easily used. But, so as a lower control arm here, as you're going down track and you're going to the corner, this is gonna compress and this is gonna shove that shaft up into the shock housing. Um, the top of the shock housing doesn't move. That's on the on the chassis itself. But so that's how generally that works. Um, just whenever we go over to the workbench, you can see. Um, but over here is the, the actual travel indicator. So we can see when we go put it on, a uh, we have a machine that will tell us the rate um, of how much weight um, this particular shock is, is doing. Um, so is this is the bottom is connected down at the bottom. You can see right there. And as this pushes up, it drives this, this rod through this um, little heim joint. And then we'll start. It doesn't really matter because we're going to go testing anyway. Um, it'll start up here right against it. And then as the, this shaft pushes up, it'll push that little uh, O-ring against that, and then it'll start moving that down. And whenever we get off the track, we can see how much that's moved so we can get the precise amount of travel for the front, for the right front corner of the car. And there's the same thing on the left front, and I'll show you that too. But oh, while I'm thinking about it, one of the other neat things that we have, these are the travel indicators. You can see here, because um, we want to keep this cross member as close to the ground as possible. We had I had a lot of issues trying to keep this car off the racetrack, um, this cross member off the racetrack. You want it as low as you possibly can get it. So we use these wear indicators to see just how close we were. And that is about a half an inch. And the other side, you can see it's a lot less. That's probably about an, a quarter of an inch or maybe, that's yeah, about a quarter of an inch. So that's kind of where we want it. Um, but we had a lot of trouble getting this where we wanted it last season. But, uh, let's go over to the, over the bench. That's the girls' Christmas present. They haven't got a chance to use it because it's snowy as hell outside. Um, so over here on the workbench, 
and you can see the same shock. This is a left front shock. On um, all these shocks, you can see uh, FRS shocks, um, one of the best shock builders in the Midwest as well. Um, so you can see the, the travel indicator on the left front and obviously the shock housing again, the shaft and everything like that. But the really thing that I really want to show people, um, and it's really hard to visualize if you've never been around racing and you really have have no experience at looking at this stuff. And when people, you look in the garage and you're like in the UI and I racing and you're like, what the heck is a, is a bump spring? What the heck is a, is a bump stop? What, and you know, what is a, what is a packer? What, what is all that stuff and how does it work? So what you can see, and my friend, a lot of people run bump springs, but they're a little expensive and I'm just dipping my toe into this, um, travel limiting realm of of stock car racing so um this is actually just a urethane or whatever the heck material they want to do it puck and it's about they come in different sizes i think this one's about an inch um so this is a bump stop and so bump springs are just like a little tiny spring that's about that size if not maybe a little smaller and they're about four inches tall and they'll fit over top of that shaft, um, the shock shaft as well. But when you start talking about other stuff, um, you could use, well, this has to be on there just to, to keep everything from kind of not squishing uniformly. So um, I should actually have one on the top. And it's hard to tell, but it's, it's mushed in the middle more than it's mushed on the outside. And that shouldn't be happening. I should actually have another piece of metal um, washer up on top. But we'll get one for next next season. But um, you can actually say that's, a, that's doing the same job as a packer is. And then just, you can barely see, and I'll show you a whole bunch of other ones. That's a packer. That is an eighth inch packer. And then this is a spacer. Um, so instead of having, going through my entire box of Joe's Racing Products packers and spacers and stuff, uh, or packers, you just make one big spacer. So that's like an inch and a half. So then you have all of these different size packers. You can see they just clip on and then they pull off um, during the race weekend. So I don't know what's that, uh, quarter inch. And then you have all different sizes going down the realm. All the way down into some pretty thin ones because um, you really want to this is very very fine tuning like you've seen like i showed you with those wear indicators on the cross member you're you're looking to get that as low as is physically possible to the racetrack without it scraping because if that hits you just lose the nose because it takes all the weight off the nose but what you'll do is is as a shock as this compresses this will move up the shock and will sit there and it'll press up against the shock housing. And the spring at that point has done its job. It's it's kind of put a, whatever load that it needs to put in is already in the already in the that corner of the car. And then the most more of the load will be taken up by this bump stop or bump spring, whichever one you probably have in, installed in the car. So like I believe the Next gens have bump springs. Excuse me. Um, they have bump springs, and I believe the uh, Xfinity cars have bump springs. I'm not positive. I haven't I haven't worked on those things in a long time. But at any rate, so as you saw, the wear indicators on the bottom of the cross member of the car, we will add or take away shims or packers. Um, to get that corner up off of the ground um, just so it barely scrapes um, going through the corner during a race. So that's where packers come in. <coughs> Excuse me. When you look in the garage UI on iRacing, you'll see an entry on the corner, on each front of the corner of the car, right front and the left front, and it'll be shock deflection. And it's a smaller number out of a bigger number. So I think I looked at, um, I don't know, maybe it was the next gen. 
uh, whenever I Google it because I don't have the UI. Yeah, obviously, my rig is in the house, not in the garage, so I couldn't look it up, um, what the shock length is. But the one that I saw was 11 inches. So this particular shock is 7 inches um, throw. So when this is fully extended, the shock is completely out. From here to the inside on the bottom is 7 inches. Um, and whatever one I looked at, it did difference. It may be different between NASCAR and NASCAR, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. So um, the bigger number is usually a, a round number, so it's like 11. It's not like 11.26 or anything like that. It's usually like 11, 14, 7, 9. You know, that's the total length that this shot can be extended. Okay, so that's basically the amount of shaft that's out is... In the, in the example that I saw, 11. So the first number, <coughs> excuse me, I've been sick for a while, um, is how much of the shock is compressed. So how much of the shock is up inside of the shaft um, whenever the car is just sitting on the ground at right height, just static. So I think the one that I saw was like four point five inches um but for argument's sake and for ease of numbers so you have 4.5 inches already taken up of 11 which means you do some subtraction that would be what is that 11 10 9 8 7 so about six and a half inches left of total shaft movement before that housing smashes the bottom of the until the bottom's out. Now here's where the math comes in. If you took out the spacer and you took out the packer and you took out the shim and you um, just had in on iRacing the bump spring assembly that goes in here, it's four inches tall. So you may have, in this case, of that next gen example, six inches of travel or six and a half inches of travel but you have four inches of bump spring in here so technically you only have two and a half inches of travel before the housing hits the top of the bump spring or the bump stop whichever happens to be installed in the car so that's how you decipher and decode that shock deflection num those numbers that's that's how you figure out what exactly that means it, it it tells you how much travel that shock has before it bottoms out um and that is really important because unlike the spring deflection the spring deflection is all nice but you it, it really doesn't do anything um uh, to the for the car and the setup and everything like that because what you're looking at on nascar vehicles and for late models and super lates is the amount of travel that shock has um, before the shaft hits something, whether if there's nothing installed all the way down to the bottom or um, if you have the, the bump spring or bump stop installed, how long before the shaft hits that. Um, and then from there, you can go, okay, I'm... You know, the, the front spoiler is is dragging. It's it's not at the optimal ride height. You know, how much do, packer do I put in? So when you start go adding packer, the packer will move this up, okay, up the shaft. Because you put the packers underneath where you saw the other one. Um, let me see if I can get a good shot of it in here. I don't know if I can because it's kind of dark. So you can see the, the packer underneath there. Um, so it goes underneath. So as... You add packers, it just keeps like a little elevator, bump, 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 and it keeps moving the bump spring or the bump stop closer to the bottom of the shock housing, which actually takes away the amount of travel that is possible in the car. So if you're going down the track and you're smashing stuff, you add a packer because here is where you're going to control the travel of the front of the car actually in the shock so that's how all of this works i hope that makes a little bit of sense
And if you're a racer and you want your some buy some good shocks, do got good prices, and he's an evil genius when it comes to shocks. FRS. There's his telephone number. All right. Um, I'm sure I'll I'll get some questions in the comments, and uh, I'll try and answer them as best as I can. But at any rate, that's all. I want to get back to changing out.